Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is an HP OEM R9 380 graphics card. It was featured in 2016's Omen gaming system along with an i5-6400. The R9-380s were rebranded versions of the R9-285 with improved clock speeds, but OEM cards like this aren't always what they seem, and that's why I like buying them. What's immediately clear with the HP-380 is the odd positioning of the power connectors. They stick out at the back of the card, and sort of resemble little legs when the card is upright. I presume that this design change was made because of the compact nature of the Omen system that it came from. These are standard connectors, not some weird proprietary connectors, which means that the card will of course fit in any system as long as your case is big enough and your six pin connectors aren't about a centimeter too short, like mine. Despite being a rebrand, most 390s featured increased clock speeds up from the 285s with one exception that I can think of off the top of my head being the PowerColor PCS Plus R9 380 V2 version, though this card did have an increased memory clock. This HP version shares the same 918 MHz core clock and 1375 MHz memory speeds of a standard Radeon 285, which GPU-Z even labels it as. I'm not sure if this happens with all 380s, but I've read that it has done since a certain Windows 10 version update. Now, of course, the card has 4GB of GDDR5 memory, which confirms it's a 380, as no 285s had more than 2GB, which I think will really help here. So let's say you find one of these and want to stick it in your system so that you can enjoy some modern games. How well does it do? Well, I have a feeling, as I said just now, that the 4 gigs of VRAM will definitely help out here, especially at 1080p. So let's have a look. Crisis Remastered at 1080p low, first of all, and I wasn't sure what to expect when firing up any of these games, to be honest. Crisis 2020 ran with at least 60 FPS with MSAA times one enabled as well and it still looks very good at these settings it's unusual to see such good one and 0.1 percent lows here as well but all seems well here it could just be that it runs better with amd graphics cards as well compared to nvidia the card hit 80 to 81 degrees maximum today and this seems fine as it didn't throttle or anything like that. I've tested a couple of older AMD reference style cards in the past that quickly heat up and drop a few megahertz here and there to try and stay cool. There is of course no room for overclocking though and I think HP made a good choice by keeping the speed of the card identical to the older R9285. Fortnite is up next and although I started off with the high settings, this caused a few lag spikes in the lobby so I dropped things to medium. I then remembered that the game always lags while waiting for a proper game to start, but I stuck with the medium settings anyway to ensure that we had some breathing room in case of unwanted performance dips. We actually had a lot of breathing room, as it turns out, because the card averaged over 100 FPS. Looking at the 1 and 0.1% lows and it's easy to see that there were a couple of small hiccups but these occurred at the start of the match and performance ironed itself out pretty soon. The same can be said for the Witcher 3's performance which presented a few stutters in White Orchard so medium graphical and post processing settings were the best bet. With these settings we still retained a plus 60 FPS average and as I made the mistake of taking on some high level Nilf Guardian soldiers things remained pretty stable for the most part. I would assume that progressing further into the game and wandering through Novigrad for example would cause the card to fare a little worse as is the case for a lot of open world games. It just depends on where you are and what you're doing. Another good example of this is of course Red Dead Redemption 2 which ran really well at low settings with the high textures as we sort of hovered around Emerald Ranch. This is one game where that 4 gigs of RAM makes an immediate difference because I was able to choose 1920 by 1080 right off the bat and set the textures to high. These are my sort of if in doubt settings. If you're not sure what to do in the options menu, just turn everything down and turn the settings to high because this option alone will ensure the game looks pretty good. I think this title will still be up there among the best looking games for a while to come. Of course, busier areas like Valentine and Saint Denis will cause a few more issues and you can expect a lot less frames as the action starts to heat up. 
The newly released Watch Dogs Legion also ran quite well at 1080p, albeit with the low settings, but you should expect closer to 30 in reality, and to be honest, it still does look pretty good though. This GPU still supports the latest drivers from AMD as well, so I'm sure that definitely helps. 60fps wasn't doable at Full HD as I mentioned, but we were seeing around 50. First of all, I stole a moped, something that just seems fitting given that this is set in London, and then cruised around for a bit looking out for those pesky frame rate dips. I then eventually stole a double decker bus as I continued on my very British crime spree before visiting the Thames. In all seriousness though, this actually caused the frame rate to drop quite a lot. I don't know if it was the area as a whole or just going near water that caused severe problems, but there was certainly an issue which meant a performance drop to the mid 20s in terms of FPS. MSI Afterburner doesn't work with Forza Horizon 4, but it does have its own in-game FPS counter, and while the R9 380 OEM card was hitting the upper end of its capabilities once again in terms of usage, our frame rate actually held up very well, and in fact we were seeing around 80 FPS at medium. Because of this I eventually switched to the high settings, or the high preset I should say, and the frame rate didn't really change all that much. Forza Horizon 4 seems to be very well optimised, as are a lot of these Microsoft games that appear on both Xbox and PC. As it turns out then, the 4GB rebrand of the R9285 or the R9380 still holds up fairly well in a lot of titles, and when it comes to those newer games, 30fps should still be doable at 1080p as well. These cards in the UK can be found at around £100, which I don't think is too bad, but it all depends on what they cost where you live, and I think this HP version in particular is quite interesting because although it has the stock caller and standard R9285 speeds, these actually benefit it because it doesn't get too hot and therefore it doesn't throttle in intensive situations. This is probably very helpful when it's in its original HP Omen case, which I think was quite small with this model card installed. I think it was quite a small HP Omen that this card could be found inside. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know if you've ever owned one of these or maybe you still do. If that is the case, of course, then uh, let me know how it performs for you in 2020. If you once owned the card and then got rid of it, let me know why you got rid of it. Did Was there one game in particular that it could no longer run and that was the deciding point for you that you thought, right, this card has got to go? What was that game? Let me know, as always, in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And uh, the next time I actually see you or speak to you on video might be when my 3070 arrives. Yeah, I was lucky enough to get one of those. It was a personal upgrade I was going to make in a couple of years, but... Given the way that stock is going, I don't know when I would have had another ch chance to find one. So I made the decision and snapped one up. So hopefully, maybe I can make something budget related with that. But yeah, it was an expensive buy. So I don't, <laughs> I don't think I can get away with that. See you in the next one.